Welcome to Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop with me, your host, Cool Dude Clem. Okay, who knows what this circuit could possibly be for? Maybe this transformer will shed some light on things. You've seen it in the latest project I'm working on, and it's going to go in the latest project I'm working on. Still don't know what it's for? It's going in this. My amplifier I'm building. And yes, it does look a little bit different to how it looks, um, to how it was last time you saw it. As you can see, I've done a few uh, renovations on it. I've made a proper front panel now with the controls on it. So I've got the tape monitor switch here and the tape monitor selector switch, which will also control tape dubbing. Got the main selector switch here, and of course all the volume and tone controls. Yes, I've made the tone controls work now. There's absolutely no buzzing whatsoever, and I think by putting this piece of metal around it and grounding it, that seems to have sorted out the problem. Now, back to this thing. So, let's just take the transformer out of the picture for a minute, and I'll show you exactly what this thing is. This is part of the power supply for the amplifier. These three wires here is where the power comes in from the transformer. As you know, it is a center tap transformer, that's why I've got three wires there. It goes into this rectifier here, which sends 30 volts into these two capacitors here. So 30 volts into this one and 30 volts into that one. And then into these two fuses, and then out to the amplifier. So that's a total of 60 volts right there. Also, the transformer's output goes into these two diodes here, and into this capacitor, and into this regulator chip, which gives about 15 volts. Well, should give about 15 volts, I haven't tested it yet. That's what I'm going to do in this video. I'm going to be testing this thing and making sure that it works. So we have 30 volts plus and minus with the ground for the amplifier, and 15 volts for all the other parts. Right, well, that should now be energised. Again, I'm doing it the dangerous way. But you know I do it this way now. Shouldn't come as a shock to you. Only chance of getting a shock is if I do this wrong. I'm just going to connect the meter up to this thing and see what we've got. Okay, let's see if we've got anything coming out of the 15 volt tap or 15 volt output. And yes, we have got 15.1 volts there. Can you see that? Okay, so I'm happy with that. Now, test the 30 volt outs. This could be a little bit dangerous, because I don't really want to zap myself on this thing. Right, so I'm just going to test it here. See what we've got. Okay, we've got 30.4 volts right there. negative 30.3 volts, well, negative 30.4 volts there. Great, that seems to be working absolutely perfectly. Next thing to do, put this in my amp and test it. Okay, well, ladies and gents, here it is. Transformer has been put in the amplifier. And unfortunately, we have a couple of problems. There is a massive power on thump when this thing is connected up. Now I'm just going to put the camera on one of the speakers so you can see what I'm talking about. Should be able to see how it moves when I turn it on now. Might be able to hear mum in the background there. Oh. Sorry about that, bit of microphone feedback there. I forgot, you see. Got the reel-to-reel, -reel, which is recording the sound, connected up to this. And of course, turn it on. Microphone feeds back. Well, that's kind of looking good. Just got to get some knobs for that. Anyway, I'll shut the door in case it makes any other loud noises and the noise mum. It's not the actual amplifier itself that's got power on thump. It's this thing, the tone control circuit. If I sound a bit stuffy right now, I've got another cold. Yep, I'm going to talk about this anyway. 
I talk too much, but who cares? Only about ten people are going to be more knowledgeable about this anyway, but whatever. So anyway, there is a massive power on thump in this tone control when it's turned on. And of course, as the amplifier is connected right up to it, it amplifies that power on thump and sends an even nastier pulse into the speakers. Another problem which you might have noticed is, well, <clears throat> there is a boatload of buzzing in this thing. I mean, even though I've got the volume controls turned all the way off, you can hear, maybe, a lot of buzzing there. That's not the lights interfering with this. If I turn the lights off, I'll turn the cams light on so you can see. So it's not the light scores and that interference, although I am going to shield all the parts inside this with some metal foil. This came out of a biscuit tin or cookie tin or whatever you want to call it. Anyway, I've been farting around in here trying to figure out what the problem is. And I think we've got ourselves a ground loop. You see, this is the 15 volt ground for the tone control and the phono preamp and the selector relays. And that's connected to the center tap on the transformer. And the amplifier's grounds are also connected to the center tap on the transformer. And I think that's caused the ground loop, making it making that buzz noise. And I can prove that because if I disconnect this wire here, as you can hear, the buzzing stops. And this is still working. I'm going to play the record player through it. Uh, you might be able to see it. Just about. If I put this onto record player, I think I've got record player selected. Yeah. I know I touched the stylus on this, but that doesn't matter because I'm getting a new cartridge for this anyway. I've got an Audio Technica 8091 coming for this, so doesn't matter. I'm just going to play a tatty old record. I haven't got the power connected up to it. So I'll just spin it by hand. As you can hear, that's working. So, it's looking really good. It's looking very good. And there's no more hum in the tone control. Remember this switch to set the gain. If I do this, switch the gain onto high. No more buzzing. The switches, on the other hand, do pick up a little bit of interference from the lights, so I'm going to have to shield them. But really, all that remains is just to put the connectors in. I don't know how I'm going to do this. Put them in somehow. I haven't left much room, there's only two connectors anyway. And of course, sort out that power on thumb. So I'm thinking of making some kind of speaker protection circuit. I'm going to use a relay and a resistor and a capacitor. So about two seconds or so after the power's turned on, the relay will connect the speakers. Now I thought I'd give you a bit of a close-up view of this thing. Just so you can see more of how it's constructed got a nice front panel on this now. I'm going to go over what all these knobs and dials and that do. Here we've got the left and right volume control. And these four controls along here are the tone controls. Now at first you might think it's some kind of graphic equaliser, but it's actually not. These are individual bass and treble controls for the left and right. This is the left treble. This is the left bass. This one is the right treble, and this one is the right bass. And I accidentally put the controls in the wrong way around, so that's why treble's there and bass is there, but I mean, it doesn't really matter. It does what it's supposed to do, and that's the good thing. This switch here is the selector switch. So I've got aux one there, where you can connect a radio or a CD or whatever. Aux two. Again, you could connect whatever you, whatever the hell you want there. There's phono. Magnetic phono, of course. And this position is tape dub. So you can dub from one tape to the other. 
This switch here is the tape monitor switch, so you can switch the tape monitor on or off. When it's like that, tape monitor is on. And when it's like that, tape monitor is off. And this switch selects what tape you want to monitor from. And when you're in tape dubbing mode, this switch will still do the same tape monitors, you know. Up it will still do, um, say, tape 1, and down it will still do tape 2, but you'll have the other tape deck playing through it, so you can dub from one tape to the other, which I think is a pretty cool feature. Sorry about the extreme close-up here, there's nothing much I can do about that. Anyway, you can pretty much see how this is put together. So I've got this board here, back here, which is what the tone control and everything is on. Big metal shield for the tone control circuit. You might just be able to see the circuit board sticking out there. And here are the other switches. This little circuit here is where the relays are for the tape dubbing and tape monitoring. Under this metal thing here with this bit of cardboard over it just to so these wires don't short out on it. That's the phono preamp. Here's the circuit board for the power supply. The main transformer itself. The actual amplifiers, which are quite powerful. I haven't got a true RMS meter, so I can't actually measure the output that I'm getting from them. But I imagine it's at least about 30 watts what I'm getting out of that, and that's per channel. And now you can just about see how it's connected onto the main board with screws. And I've just accidentally turned the camera's light out, and I'm trying to pan the camera over. So, that's really coming on well. It's a little bit later on. And as you can probably see now, I've put in a power switch and an LED. And over here, I've put in the speaker protection circuit. So now, when I turn it on, there's no more power on thumb. Unfortunately, I've run into a few problems. Firstly, this switch is completely upside down to what I thought it would be. you think that with the contacts here and the switch in this position, it would, it would be on, but it's actually off. That's on. Also, the LED is powered by the mains through this resistor here, which doesn't seem to be enough because it's barely glowing at all. In fact, I can only just about barely make out just a little tiny bit of glow there. The speaker protection circuit, however, seems to work absolutely flawlessly. Let's just get a close-up of that. So, this is the speaker protection relay. And what it does is connects the speakers to the amplifiers a couple of seconds after the power's turned on. And how it does this is that it's powered off the 30 volts through this resistor here. And this big capacitor prevents the relay from turning on immediately. Because when the power's on, the capacitor gets charged through this relay, I mean through this resistor. So when there's enough charge in the capacitor, there's enough voltage at the capacitor to turn on the relay and it connects the speakers, and that's basically how it works. The power switch, on the other hand, is having quite a lot of problems. Firstly, this capacitor that I've put here is way too big. I thought it would be a good arc suppression capacitor, and in fact it's doing its job too well because when the thing is switched off, it lets enough power through to keep it ticking over, which really it's not supposed to do. And you might occasionally be hearing some humming right now, that's the amplifier doing that. That's while it's struggling to work on the uh, this capacitor. In fact, it's not supposed to be doing anything at all at the moment, but I'm going to have to sort out these little problems. Maybe put a smaller LED in there. I'm not going to touch it or it will zap me. Change this capacitor. And everything should be pretty good. I'm not going to put a lower value resistor in there because this resistor does get pretty warm, even though it's just connected up to an LED. It's a little later on now. I've put a different arc suppression capacitor in, as you can see. Much smaller one. So now when I turn the power off, it does actually turn off. Put a different LED in, though you can't really see it glowing. It is on right now. If I turn it round, might be able to make out the LED glowing. Of course, you would be able to make it out if 
I was showing the camera. Anyway, I'm going to turn this off now. So that's all power off. So anyway, I'm going to play a tape and turn this thing on. And you'll hear there's no speaker thump. And about a couple of seconds later, you'll hear the music start to play. Okay, the cassette is playing. Now I'm going to turn it on. No speaker thump. pretty good and as you probably heard the music played about a couple of seconds after I turned it on thanks to the speaker protection circuit that I've put in so things are looking really good all that remains now is somehow put these jacks in I have absolutely no idea how I'm going to put these in they're gonna go sort of there like that no idea how I'm going to do that but anyway, that's going to be for another video because I'm just about out of time now, although I could go on forever since I have no more time limit on YouTube. But anyway, dinner's almost ready, so I've got to go. So until next time, goodbye. Well, that's just about it for this episode of Cool Dude Clems Electronic Workshop. Remember, if you like these videos, feel free to subscribe by clicking on me right now. And don't forget to tell your friends about Cool Dude Clem and his electronic workshop. Also, if you want to see the previous episode of Paul Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop, click on the box on the right. I think I'm pointing over to the left, but whatever. Anyway, that's it for this episode, so until next time, goodbye, because my dinner's ready. <laughs>